All right. Hey, everybody. This is Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols with the Tactical Fitness Report. This time, we are talking about the year, year ago, NSW put out a study about, well, I should say a statistical analysis about um, what exercises and their scores correlate with Hell Week success. And we're going to go through that, take a look at some of the, uh, the actual uh, study. But, um, you know, for me, looking at it, it was a great attempt at putting all this stuff together because it's needed to be done in all areas of tactical fitness. Because I mean, when I started writing about tactical fitness, we didn't call it tactical fitness. It was literally military law enforcement and firefighter fitness. And there were no studies on the firefighter, the police officer, the SWAT team guy, the special ops guy. There, everything, all the studies were generated around collegiate and professional athletes and getting them optimal performance. Right, you know, but, same. Yeah. 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 So now, you know, it has evolved in a way where they see a need. I think probably war did that more than anything. Yep. Right. And, it's, and that's, I think that's the beauty right there is the, the segue is that the the presidential fitness standard was yeah. established post world war 1 because of the 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 men trying to get in weren't physically capable or or, or healthy enough yes. this is kind of that same idea we're in a sustained combat environment where there is a greater need for uh the warfighter uh, especially the special forces communities so they established this sort of uh statistical analysis to help drive the candidates to better preparation. So just, that's the framework. This is similar, this is, this is an, an effect, as Stu is saying, from the, it's born out of need and necessity. Yes. So that is why this, because I was, I was leaving the Navy at the time when this was being established and talked about, uh, and I'm well aware of the, the statistical, I, I, or, there's a reason why we're not calling it a study, and it's, it, it's, it's kind of the semantics of what Stu and I come from, but, the, the analysis of these people, it's, it's a big cross section. I mean, 600 people, give or take, if you say the average class is 200. Um, it's a lot of data points, so there's a lot of good to be taken out of it. But we want to help you guys break it down and, and better understand exactly what you're looking at. Yeah. I, I would say my only issue <clears throat> with the, uh, the uh, write-up, the way they did it, is there, there's some English that I think could have been differently used. Um, just to better explain some things, not that it was explained incorrectly, just I think we need to maybe define a few things and discuss some of the reasons you know why the why we have but for the why we thought we should do a podcast on it yeah right so let yeah. let's share the screen and and by the way, this is a a web page at uh sealswick dot com and this is the link right here. So you can see that, Jeff? I, I think it's probably uploading right now. Okay. There we go. Now I got gotcha. you. Yeah, right. it's, it's through. Yeah, so it may take, might be a slight pause. Or anyway, so this was done over a course of classes 300 to 318. So they had over 2,000 candidates yeah. uh, that went through this thing. So that's, that's a lot. And as you can see, each one of these markers down here on the horizontal axis, you know, that's the class. That's the class number that made it through Hell Week. And the dark is the class that was med rolled. Now, the one thing I do not know that I did not catch in the study if these med rolls actually made it as well. Yeah. That, that's, know, sometimes you have a med roll that just won't make it through. It's, it's a smaller percentage, yeah. but yeah, I guess it depends on the clock. I mean, it depends yeah. on a lot of it. Yeah. This fits right in our wheelhouse of saying it depends. Yes. This is, this is the mothership of it depends. Absolutely. You look at this, yeah. there is no, there is, I don't see a single correlation other than just random chaos of like who makes it through but right. in one class to the next. I mean, no, it, I mean, it doesn't, what it, what's missing is, is seasonal. Yeah, but understanding that Could the water be. temperature never changes, you know, whether you're in August or you're in January, the evening temperature is roughly the same. Yeah, uh, the, the two o'clock afternoon temperature can be a little bit varied uh, between August and January, maybe six to eight degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, but San Diego's sunny 
and it has a consistent 14 to 16 knot offshore breeze, which is why San Diego is perfect for buds because the water temperature is always around 61 to 63 degrees, and there's a 14 knot wind, which makes yeah, it cold freezing. all the time. It's freezing. I mean, yeah. that 60 and 70 doesn't sound cold. But it is. It's really cold. It's super cold, yeah. especially sustained. Yes. Um, so th this one's hard to really draw. Like, you know, it, it'll say it's drawing a conclusion from it, and it says right there underlying it, f faster runners and swimmers. Yeah. And, and, and here's the only thing that Stu and I, not to speak for Stu, is that from being a researcher and a physiologist, the one thing that I'll take away from this that I think that they should have not said um, or could have said better, excuse me, what I think is a better way to say it. It says faster runners and swimmers have a good lower body power. Understand this from the standpoint of physiology. Power is correlated, not an endurance, okay? There's a management aspect of it from physics. This is straight physics. Power is not, okay, just like your energy systems where it's power, strength, and endurance in that order, Okay. The, the running that they're talking about, you're going to see through the study if you haven't looked through it, it's going to, you know, those who have the best four-mile timed run are showing uh, a greater chance of success in Hell Week. That four-mile time run is not power-derived. It is endurance-derived, okay? It's lactate buffering. It is not power. But they do have ones in there like the 300-meter shuttle, which is pure power. Yeah. So I, I think that that sentence could have been structured a whole lot better. But also they have a, a 1K fin swim. It, it's not a power movement either, but with the fins, it becomes a powerful movement. It, it's, yes. it's, it's, we're, I know it's semantics, folks, but it really, it doesn't, that sentence does not give this uh, analysis any real credibility. That, that sentence could be restructured, I think. Yeah, I, I, like I said, as a writer, as a consumer of English, I, I think it could just be better written. But, you know, you'll see down here what they're trying to say yeah. later on in the study and the charts, and we'll explain that. So don't get lost in the first paragraph, first yeah. two paragraphs. And I just pulled this directly from the page, right? Yeah. And I read it. Data shows that SEAL candidates who are faster runners and swimmers who have good lower body power are more likely to complete Hell Week and less likely to get medically rolled. Uh, rollback dropped from the training slash med roll. Upper body and lower body strength plays less of a role for success. Now that can be confusing in itself just because, you know, you never want to discredit your upper body and lower body strength. Cause I take upper body as also core. And if you have a weak core, you're not going to generate any power anyway. You know, so there's, there's some, there's some issues there. Um, you know, so, you know, plus, you know, weak core is going to really hurt you underneath a boat and logs, you know, so there, there are some upper body strength and core strength, you know. That, just for a point of education yeah. too, understand what the core is not your abs by no, itself. No, 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 no. The yeah. core is nipple to knee, mid thigh, front and back. Your core is primarily your glutes. Yeah. Okay. So people say core and sit-ups. It is one fourth of the problem of the of the equation. Okay, abdominal structure, iliacus and psoas. Okay, that's your hip flexors. Backside you have glutes, which is the antagonist of your iliacus and psoas and hip flexors, and then you have your lower lumbar and thoracic, which is the antagonist of your of your abs. So it's those four components that make up your core too. So just keep that in mind. Right. And the thing is, is that they get into here, you know, the highest strength values. And you'll see there's some guys off this chart strong on this that didn't make it through Hell Week. And there's some guys that, you know, weren't very strong at all made it through Hell Week. Yeah. So it, it, the thing is, once again, it depends. And you can't measure someone's heart. And I think that's one of the things that, that I take away from this is that, um, you know, it's hard to put a statistical analysis on something – where so many intangibles are required to make it through. Yeah, you know, there's – and this – and here is where, again, th this is – so something that's a, called a study needs to be empirically reviewed by peers. And that's kind of what Stu and I are talking about is that if, if this had been – if this had been reviewed by, by physiologists and published or whatever it is, 
we, they would have caught some of these things and corrected them and made it a little bit easier to read yeah. um, and a little more straightforward. And it's no knock on NSW at all. Like there's such, such good information out here, but this is the other piece because when you, when you speak in absolutes, you create more confusion than you, than you do uh, making it more seamless to understand. And that, that's right with this second paragraph is, is it says right here very clearly why that's an absolute. And then it says simple, another absolute. And it's not simple. Right. It's, None it's, of it's, simple. it's the furthest thing from it. And so then it defines what, you know, Hey, here's right here is where here's a physiological uh, wrong. This is, this is, this is one of those things. And this is, this is wrong. I hate to say that, but it, uh, endurance and, re and fatigue resistance if it said more power and fatigue, so power is indicative of fatigue resistance, not endurance. It doesn't make sense. Like I sound like I'm crazy a little bit maybe, but from a physiology standpoint and from a physics standpoint, fatigue resistance, fatigue is due to dynamic eccentric movement, the slowing down, the quick slowing down, the amortization phase of a power contraction. That is not, indicative of endurance so but that's what you see people that, that resist, resistance to fatigue you're seeing people breaking under load that's where you see rollbacks and so i think that could have been better clearly stated saying number one it's not simple and this is not really why it, it certainly injury is directly directly that's what shin splints shin splints are lacking power management which which affects your resistance to fatigue Okay, that's what happens in shin splints. Okay, you don't dynamically decelerate very well. So your tibias anterior, start the fascia starts swelling and pulling away from the bone. That's fatigue resistance. Okay, that's a power thing, not an endurance thing. Right. And they kind of say that too here with, with more lower body power, maybe better able to negotiate the challenging terrains of the bud's environment. Yep. Kind of a vague statement, but they're getting into the lower body power segment. So yeah, it's just, we, we just, we, we just want to clear it up gentlemen. Yeah. Cause we get the same questions of it going, well, it's saying run more and it's saying they're right, yeah. but they also need to look at, um, they need to expand. I, actually, there was an interview on, on YouTube. I watched about buds. One of the instructors in great lakes, he did had a better job of explaining it on a broad scale. Um, and it's just, the study has so much good information that we think that the de description could just could have been better. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, I'm real off quick, my soapbox. Well, yeah, no, no. One last thing. Uh, you know, seal candidates who develop too much strength may create imbalances that affect injury. And we'll we'll define what too much means. But I added in there or too much anything, because too much of anything means you're great at something, right? Let let's just say that. So you're great at powerlifting. You know, you may be weaker at running. You're great at running. You may be weaker on the strength exercises. You're great at swimming. Your ability to run may be severely decreased because your body's not used to gravity. You know, so too much of anything can create imbalances Agreed. that affect injury. So let, let's go through some of this. My, my little addition on this, and this is my takeaway from this study slash statistical analysis, is that you know, you do not need to be great at ev ev anything, but you need to be good at everything. And we're going to define to you, and we'll go through some of the, all the elements of this test, maybe even add some other exercises that you can add to make sure you're good at to also help you. Um, yep. And, you know, we also discussed some intangible elements and mental toughness in the Tactical Fitness Report 32, the one previous to this one, that – you know, there's, it, it's very difficult to take black and white statistical analysis and apply it to something that is so gray as hell week. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's, I think that's why I use the, the term, the athlete as an example as a decathlete. Yeah. Because they are good really good at everything, but they're not great at one. Like they may favor something, right? Someone may Absolutely. really be good technically at throwing a javelin. Right. And which is so the te the technical aspect of their execution is great, but so that's what buds is like the technical execution of someone that's really likes to do pull ups because they're good at them, and that's not what we're saying. We're not saying not be great at that. Yes, but we're saying like just like Stu and I have said, I was a big 
heavy, powerful guy. And I had to take some of that power and strength and convert it into strength and endurance. Yes. Same. So even though some of the programming we talk about now is it's intense at points, I think what you'll maybe see is that Stu and I favor some of the strength stuff, not because we favor it as individuals, but because so many people that we get already are good runners, right? Yeah. So many people are good runners. They can run the, you know, a sub eight thirty mile and a half already, but they can only do six pull-ups or eight pull-ups, right? They can, and, and, and they can't swim. So that's kind of where we're coming from. Right. Hey, real quick, Jeff, let's, um, let's just for a quick little science class, let's define four strength, power and work. Okay. Just because they've used this term a couple times with strength and power and there are differences, you know, yeah. it's hard to have one without the other, but yeah. I guess it's possible if you look at the equation. Yeah. But, um, you know, everybody knows force. If you've been in any science class, force equals mass times acceleration. And your strength is going to be measured in basically your one rep max. You know, how much weight yep. you can lift, how much weight you can move. Yep. How fast that may, weight can be moved, right? If you, if you bring the weight down, but you accelerate it faster, you have more power. Yep. Right? So, that's, so look at an example like the, the epitome of power is not a power lifter. It's Olympic weightlifting. Heavy, yep. heavy mass moved with great acceleration to a point, a beginning and end. That's Olympic weightlifters have the maximal amount of power exhibited on the planet. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. If you take a look at what the power equation is in physics is power equals force, that yep. mass times acceleration times yep. speed. You know, yep. how quickly you can move that weight. Yeah. And then you look at, so then that's, so that's, it's weird because power lifters, it's not that they're not, power for the capacity but they're strong yes. they are taking a mass a heavy mass and they're moving over distance which is work so strength is work equals force times distance yes. right so a heavy mass over multiple distances accumulates work volume that's what strength is yes so an absolute strength is a heavy mass moved over a short distance one time yes Abs that's absolute strength uh, strength endurance is taking a 75 to 85 to 92 percent of that max and moving it multiple times yeah that's right. kind of what buds is but it's more it's body that's why we use a lot of body weight stuff yeah. because the more you can propel your body over a greater distance the more work capacity you have the more strength endurance you have so you yeah. get the component that component of strength and endurance there you go. All right. So there, there's a few definitions for you as we go through the rest of this, uh, the chart. And like I said, you can see this uh, and uh, I'll, I'll have the link in the uh, description, but there is a link to the website. If you Google Navy SEAL Hell Week success study, it'll probably pop up in the first page. So yeah. it's on the sealswick.com page. So here Pretty we go. Easy to find. Yeah, real easy to find. So let's do this. Let's take a look at the best and the worst scores who completed and also failed Hell Week. This is the ones who completed Hell Week. And if you take a look at some of these scores, I mean, once again, they're all over the place. And this, these are the people who finished Hell Week and made it through. Um, you know, I, I look at this chart and see that, you know, there's some fast guys, there's some slow guys, there's some strong guys, there's some not so strong guys. Um, but – because like you look at the sit-ups, yeah, that right there. Because if you look at the individual chart on the sit-ups, those who had the highest sit-ups above one thirty were most likely to get through. But in this particular analysis, the best score was one hundred and nine. Right. So to that's just to make your point. You know, we we want like I always broadcast to my guys to do over a hundred sit-ups, do over a hundred push-ups, and those sort of things because. Same. Just like we kind of talked about the mental toughness side or preparation is that the more you are physically prepared, the more you physically can endure the stress. Yes. That's what this is, study has did a really, really, really good job of explaining is that those that scored higher across the board typically did better, yes. right? It's, yes. There is a real clear correlation there. 
Yes. So we don't have to guess with that. Yeah, absolutely. I put stars here just by the ones that the, the analysis actually gave a lot of credit to success. Yeah. So the standing lawn jump, once again, that's a, that's a power movement. Yep. Somebody jumping 111 inches. That's pretty darn good. Um, 72 inches. That's, that's not that good. You know, that's, no. a, that's six feet, you know, so might've been a really big guy though. I, you know, who knows? Right. A, yeah. a standard. So a st the standard deviation, so you all know, I'm getting, I won't get in depth of much of the stuff. Yeah. The standard deviation for a standing long jump is to be able to jump at least your own body height. Yes. That's the standard from the NFL to European football to this, these, so, you know, these, this collection of, stu of, of, uh, of exercises, we'll call them, were chosen specifically because they could compare these against a given population uh, of, of a bunch of other athletes using these same metrics. Yeah. So Naval Social Warfare didn't just come up with this out of the blue. A lot of successful organizations are using these tests to further correlate their success. Yep. And so it makes sense to not just reinvent the wheel. Use, because it has to be reproducible, predictable, um, reliable, and you have to be able to get throughput, more people through these tests. Because you could, you could evaluate each individual really, really intently. It would take a ton of time, and it probably wouldn't yield a greater result than they did. So that's why they did this. Yep. And as you look, you know, some of these things like 24 reps of your body weight on a bench press, that's exceptional. You know, 25-pound pull-ups, 20 reps, that's exceptional. exceptional. Yep. But as you can see down here on the worst scale, you know, doing one rep of your body weight is not that good, but they're still making it through hell week. So yep. I want to end this, you know, you look at these worst scores, they are all still making it through hell week, a four-mile timed run at 30 minutes. You know, I have never run a four mile timed run in twenty one forty eight. No. You know, and that was one of the best scores that uh, made it through Hell Week. And you'll see, however, on the next page, you're gonna see something kind of unique as well, because some of these great scores that you see that made it through Hell Week are the same scores that didn't make it through Hell Week. Yep. So it's you know, to say this is should be your goal is not necessarily the goal. You know, these, you know, there's a range here that we're trying to talk about that is good. You know, some of these scores on the, on the left side are great, great scores, you know, but I'd like to see what the, you know, some of the other scores, you know, where are all these guys weaknesses? Because that's yeah. what you need to focus on. If yeah. You're not focusing on your weakness. You know, you're going to get, it's going to find it, you know, buds will find that weakness for you. For is sure. there anything on this chart you want to say? Talk about. No, I, I think I think it really is a good representation of of what they're saying here is be well rounded. Like and that's that's a tough thing to do because like for you and I, like I was really good at swimming and I was really good at being strong. I didn't like to run. I still don't like to run, but I had to. Yeah. I knew that I had to. Don't put it and, and here's one thing, one of the statements I've heard from NSW that was right on target. <laughs> Don't go to boot camp hoping that they will get you in shape. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> it, it, that's, for anything. Now. that's for any job in the military. Oh man. If Don't. you're just a regular army guy, Navy guy, Air Force, do not go there thinking hell we or whatever uh boot camp is going to get you in shape yeah, just, all the ancillary stress yeah from that new environment will almost it will fight you the whole time like trying to get in the best shape that you possibly can when you've encountered all these other new stressors right so in the, so let me debunk one of the fears too that i know Stu and i deal with is like you know you put all this time and effort to prepare before you get to buds well you're going to get to buds and almost detrain. Yeah. But what you've done is you've recreated a new baseline for yourself of really high performer. You'll detrain a little bit at boot camp. Think of it as a rest period. Yeah, honestly. A taper. It's a taper. Yeah. And then you'll go into your bud selection and you'll, you'll ramp right back up. Don't yeah. be afraid to lose and detrain because you won't. Right. Okay. Unless you've had a severe injury, severe brain trauma, um, or you've had a severe illness. I'm talking like hospitalized illness. Aside from those three things, you really don't have to worry about detraining 
that you can't get back to that new norm, that your new baseline. All right. Hey, real quick, let me just show you something here on this four mile timed run. Once again, 21 minutes, world class in my book. Yeah, you know, that's ridiculous fast. Smoking fast. Um, 30 minutes, you know, that's near the bud's minimum. Yeah, 29 minutes is, is I think, believe is a third phase time, isn't it? Yes, I think so. So, like, my, you know, 30 minutes is, you know, in first phase, that is your, your borderline, you know, your borderline failing you know, yeah. when, when you're flirting with 30 minutes. So yeah. just let you know, and they still made it through hell week. All right. right. So let, let's go to the next one. This may take a second to uh, pull up for you. You yeah, see this uh, also little section two, I want to talk about real quick, lower body power events that we were talking about. We yep. got the standing jump. We got the shuttle run, agility run. And remember power is force times speed. So yep. you, you can have, you can have power without a lot of strength. However, in this climate, you're probably going to produce the most power by having more strength and a little bit less speed. I mean, yeah. like I'm, when I'm talking about speed, I'm talking like, you know, 4.2 second you know, 40 speed. I mean, that's, yeah. Yes. I mean, so, so we know that this is, so I won't get too deep in the physiology of it, but speed and power from an anatomical positioning is from called what's called from what is comes from what's called rate coding. Simple thing. You put a bar on your back, your brain recognizes that mass. It, it, it contracts X number of muscle fibers to move that bar from historical experience. When you put an extra load on your back or you train more and more and more, what ends up happening is your brain will start call, recalling more muscle fibers to recruit more strength and power. And that is why proper training is so important. You, we need to stress you out so you can, you know, when you get the logs overhead or you have to go do an old course or more, even more importantly, when you're really tired and don't feel like being there, you have all this historical data of preparation that your body will go up. Oh, here's the log again. And yes. all your muscle fibers get engaged. It's called rate coding. So that's why you need to have that strength. So you have the capacity for speed or power, but if you have that strength base, you also will have the capacity for endurance. Yes. Because you have the muscle fibers to contract and propel. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, lower body core events, deadlift sit ups, right? I, I yeah. call that a, you know, sit-ups are obviously a core event that for sure. not the only core event in this event. I mean, it may be swimming with fins engaging yeah. or some, you know, but so endurance events, three and four mile timed runs, 800,000 meter swims, 300 yard shuttle run. I call that a, it's a, a lactate endurance, endurance for sure. It's, 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 a, it's a power movement, but it's, it's, yeah. it's getting on the threshold of lack, excuse me, lactate. Yes. So most certainly it's a strength endurance. So 300 meter or 400 meter, but typically they use 300 because at 400 you can't repeat. Yeah. 300 meters is a lactate endurance test. Yes. It shows where your threshold is. Right. So anyway, that's why I put stars by those because they're a borderline endurance power event. So yep. strength muscle endurance events. Now people, I, they, they kind of overlook this a little bit in, in my suggestion of of the study but push-up sit-ups pull-ups weighted pull-ups body weight bench press you know they say they don't really have a great amount of um correlation correlation to bud success however um you know you still need to be good at all of these you know sure. and we're going to show you what what good means but you know i have seen you know for pull-ups you got to think of pull-up is at first a strength exercise all of these are like a strength exercise. Eventually they become a muscle endurance exercise Yep. because you are now getting more reps than just one. Um, so anyway, so these things have to evolve into that. You may, you may start, everybody starts off with one pull up and that's a strength exercise. You got to yep. build that up to 20 statistically speaking, you know, to get, to get a little bit better at. It. So real quick, we'll just go through this one. You can see the, the worst, or I'm sorry, the best and the worst scores that did not make it through training. And if you can see these, they are also off the charts. Yeah. Left the 25, 25 pound pull up, 27 reps. Insane. Right. That's, I mean, 
that that's a massive, you know, 113. That's a very good jump. Yep. You know, uh, body weight bench press zero. That makes sense. You know, he did not have enough upper body strength. Yeah. A two and a half, almost, well, 2.3. A two and a half times your body weight deadlift is considered world class. Yeah. yeah 2.33 with some training. If, if that, that individual right there probably wasn't doing a whole lot of running, but the, the running he was doing affected that 2.33. So yeah. that's, we, we don't want you to be at 2.5. Now there right. probably are guys that have gone through buds that were able to do a two point five. Um, I I was not one of them. I was probably about a two point three three. But that that's what we're saying too is we we don't. If you look at a bell curve, we don't want you to be on either end of it. No, we want you to be in the middle. Yeah, a thirty eight body weight bench press. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, I had I I, I did thirty nine. 39 30 body weight that, yeah. that that's well incredible. so it just so happened we had to do at the, the command we had to do a 220 225 pounds there's oh, a okay. there's the, the clprt yeah and then there's the, the the command selection which is a it's a five mile run and there's a couple right. other things too with that command and one of them is a 225 pound bench press right which um, is the nfl combine yeah i did 39 yeah that's that's impressive yeah, and That's so the, the record is 52. I did 49 this year. Woo! So Damn. I was trying to get to 52. I was at the NFL Combine, and I was trying to get to 52. But Damn. Now, I didn't get what, there. what athlete on the football field did that? Linebacker? Offensive, offensive lineman from Oklahoma. Okay. Did 52 a okay, couple yeah. years ago. But he also weighed? 306 pounds. Right, okay. Yeah, so. I, did it at, I did it at 227. Yeah. See, that's I'm 240 now though, but yeah, but okay, I, it's I don't it's not really about me, but my thing yeah. is is like that's that's the difference between me, me, me now and then, yes. Um, and I wasn't bench pressing 27 or 38 reps at Buds at 225. No. I was probably, if I were to guess, maybe 16, which yeah. for me was good because I was 100 and uh, 185 pounds when I went through first phase, gotcha. Yeah. So. so as you can see, some of these are, uh, you know, shuttle run in the seventies. That is like slow as syrup. Yeah. Um, that's I'm, really, I'm yeah, that's, I'm 48 and I just ran one at 60. Yo, yeah. Just, the, the, the worst scores, so. the worst, the worst scores here to me, there's no surprise that these people didn't make it through. Right. And, and more of, of all those indicators, the one I see above all else is that the 300 meter shuttle. That one right there, I'd have been like, "Hey, man, you shouldn't even be here." Like that was the I'd be the one person in Vegas I would have put my money on to not make it through. Yeah, that's a good one because yeah. of that marker. I believe yeah. in that one. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. I would agree. Yeah, and if you take a look though, let's see what the worst score that made it through. You know, sixty-seven. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. still pretty bad too. But still it's pretty not bad, terrible. But you know, five seconds in this in this event is is a big window it, it really is yeah. it's for someone in that training environment i guess probably the next one that, that i was going to see is that the the 800 meter with fins at 17 minutes you should be able to do that without fins yeah 17 minutes <laughs> you oh yeah should. You should. yeah so i mean with fins man you can take it i when i here's my secret in buds and it's not a secret i guess if i'm telling it but <laughs> i didn't use my arms on the swims yeah, I was. I all just late. dolphin kicked the whole way. Yeah, I was all. Late. And I was always the first one out. My my, there was always a four of us that were always out of the water way before anyone else. Yeah, especially if you had a current and you have yeah. a little one going one way, and then it kind of pushes you coming back. Typically, yeah. But it, you usually arms alone will not get you through that current fast enough. Yeah. You got Yeah, I would just use my arm as a pillow at some point, and I would just kick. You know, yeah. five, six, seven minutes. And then I would just switch my arms a little bit to give my legs a little bit of a break. And I yep. just would phase through it. But yep. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, any, any outliers on this one? Um, you know, even the four miles, even the four mile run isn't too askew. Yeah. Um, the pull-ups, you know, I, I think that if, cause I, I think the really looking at the worst side, if you look at the worst side, those are all below the advertised numbers that Naval Special Warfare is putting out or us. 
Yes. That's right there is the big, it's not one as an individual. It's like, look at the whole thing. Like, it's like, Hey guys, we told you to get better yes. numbers than these and all yes. these guys, this guy in particular, whatever it was, or those individuals, I would be willing to bet that of all those worst scores, a couple of those are the same person. Ah, yeah. Good point. Absolutely. There, and see, that's where I wish there would be an asterisk saying, you know, hey, this cross-section of, of data is of 15 people or 60, you know what I mean? Because right. they're looking at a population of 2,000. Right. I would like to have seen that cross-section. I mean, over 2,000 people, the likelihood, maybe not so much. Right. But, but it's in a possible. Buds class, in a BUDS class. It's possible. You can have in a, a BUDS class, yes. An individual yeah. BUDS class, you're going to have a guy or guys that are bad at everything. And you wonder, yeah. how the hell did this person get in here? Because yes. that was our buzz class. We had a guy that failed everything the first two days and then got performance drop. Yeah. yeah. Failed everything. That happened. Fell out of every run. Yeah. He had to walk to, you know I mean? It's just like, how is this guy? Yeah. You know, it's, but anyway. Yeah. How about this one though? A 2130 four mile timed run did not make it through hell week. Yep. If I were to guess, he's probably 130 pounds. Cross country. He probably, he probably, he's probably the guy in the bench press body weight with zero reps. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I mean that like in all sort of like <laughs> statistical analysis is, yes. is that the fastest runner in my buds class didn't make it through. Yeah. Same. He got crushed. The very first Friday is the first day we get in the water in the pool. It crushed him. Mm. He was so fast. In our buds class, I mean, he PTR didn't, didn't, he was fine, went through PTR the four weeks. First week, the buds instructors, the first top five mile time run, they made him run backwards and he finished back. He ran the whole thing running backwards Damn. with the front runners. So <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's that's that was not me. That wasn't that's me. Impressive. So, anyway, so, you can see there's some, there's some crazy things that occur here when people give up, you know, whether they are exceptional in something or failing at something, or there's something that causes them to dig in deeper and make it through for sure. Their worst score is over here and they're making it through hell week. Yes. That, that is the invisible elephant. Yeah. That, that is the invisible elephant in the room for sure. Mental toughness, right? Can't measure that stuff. And, and that's where, all right. So but, here, but like I said, what we're trying to do is just get you guys in the best possible shape you can be to help minimize that sort of stress. All right. So we're going to go through a few more events and uh, kind of break them down a little bit. So this is another page on that study. Like I said, I just cut and pasted it, put it right here. Just wanted to show you. And these are the, you know, looking at their statistics, these are the three events that created the highest, I guess, four events, if you count the three and four mile run. Um, created the highest amount of success if you did well on these. Yep. So that, that's all they're saying. They're not saying, and this is what I want to make clear, they're not saying all the other ones don't matter. You know, they're yeah. just saying these are the ones that if you scored well on these, you had a higher percentage of, of completing the test. In fact, yep. you can even look at it here, kind of doctored uh, two um, – two pages together here, but you know, these are, maybe I can make it a little bigger for you. Like these are, you know, standing long jumps pretty high. Look, this is the three mile run. This is the four mile run. Um, you know, the shuttle runs up there. So these are just way, way down. These are what's important in this statistical analysis of people who did well were because of they ran fast and they swam fast and had a good shuttle run, had a good long jump. Yeah, I just want to point out one thing to keep in mind to keep you guys thinking objectively. So the one that we can very clearly see that was the least beneficial was the deadlift. But understand the deadlift was testing what their max was. So let's say, for example, like we, what we could have done, in my opinion, is this is hypothetical. What they could have done is said, hey, we're going to do deadlift at 75% of your body weight for number of reps max reps it, it, it yeah. changes it changes the scope of what that uh exercise is determining yes 
So, so now you go, cause so just understand we, we don't want to discredit the deadlift. No. Just like we don't want to, because let's say like the three and four mile run, that's not what it's not saying also is as well as that. That's all you should be doing. I know Stu has already said that, but we can change the parameters of each one of these exercises to fit what we'll say the 300 meter is showing or the three mile, the four mile. We can, we can take the deadlift and make it an endurance, a strength endurance type movement. Yeah. And then the question is, well, does that show more value? I think that it does uh, for pull-ups. Like, cause if you can only do so many pull-ups, maybe you wanted to work on some deadlifts at a much lesser weight, for example, right? If someone has a hard time running a great distance, well, let's work some, some shuttle running that will then correlate into a better three and four mile time run. Yes. Yeah. That's very good. And if you can see here, I mean, these pull up, push up, sit up, you know, numbers here in this chart, they cannot be discredited. Yeah. You know, they're, they're 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 the events that are going to get you to the training yeah. will they get you through the training no but you still need to be good at them enough to to have that background to where you actually have some muscle endurance to do these exercises and and not to mention here's the big thing what Stu is saying as well those three exercises in particular other than dips will be the three exercises you do more than anything else leading up to hell week yeah. On that grinder. Yep. Absolutely. So if, if, if you are really good at pushups, pull-ups and sit-ups, the, the stress placed upon your body that you're able to handle leading up to hell week will be less. Yes. So when now, you go into hell week, you're maybe you're less physically stressed out because you've been acclimated to doing pushups, pull-ups and sit-ups a lot. So yes. keep that in mind. Like we're trying to game this thing a little bit for you guys to go, wow, man, I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. Don't omit them. Yes. Don't omit them. Yeah. Well, you know, also look at it this way. Don't overdo them either. <laughs> agree. I, I get totally so agree. Many, yep. So many people that are doing these every day and wonder why they're not seeing success. Yep. You got to recover. Max reps. Yeah. You need, especially got if you're to. doing this kind of volume, if you're doing 20 push ups a day and you're 50 years old, Hey, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. You know, you're doing five pull-ups every day, go for it. But if you're getting in hundreds of repetitions, you have to treat that, you know, that kind of volume with a day off in yep, between. You do. So, so it, I, I piece of really good piece of advice I got once was a very good friend of mine who's been is a PhD, been training guys for years. He's like, you know, when you show up to a training environment, you feel good. The reason why you feel good is because you've allowed yourself to recover. If every day you show up just kind of like lethargic and just don't have that spark, it's because you haven't fully recovered. Now, in buds, you're not going to have that, hey, guys, I got to take the day off. I'm tired. But we want you to train that way because that's the best way to acquire that tolerance. Let yourself recover. Yes. All right. So we finally got to this point here where we're going to tell you what is good. All right. Because we always say you don't need to be great at everything. You just need to be good at everything. So let's, uh, you know, 90 inches on a standing long jump. That's pretty darn good. What is that? Yep. Uh, over eight feet? Not quite? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's, it's, that's eight, eight feet for an adult yeah. is really good. Yeah. Ten feet is world class. The record in the NFL combine is 12-2. Yeah, that's crazy. That, which is insane. Yeah, that's that's off the chart. So, twenty five pound pull up in the teens. Yep, good. It's real good. Respectable yep. body weight bench press once again in the teens. Yep. You know, you could even probably push that up to twenty. You know, if you're if that's one of your good ones. Yep. You know, and, and not like I always I always say whatever your max pull up is, c cut it in half and then round to the even number. There you go. Right. That's yeah. kind of where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, deadlift. Um, I was always like 1.75 to two, you know, yeah. I think I got over two once, you know, two, two times my body weight once before, yeah. you know, when I was about 210. So four or something. Um, but I like, I like the, the deadlift one rep max is like I said, like I don't even deadlift one rep max. I did, I I've done mean. it once in the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I like to do is take, I like to get a stronger back 
for endurance purposes. Yes. If I was competing, yes. But take that that deadlift weight that just is it's a lot, it's work, but it feels kind of good. And let's let's do I like to do clusters, do set of three, set it down, take a sip of water, do set of three, set it down. Yep. It's no different than like any other exercise. We've just kind of got wrapped around that deadlift is always as heavy as you can go. Right. If if and, and I mean this like in a strength side, like again, when I'm 70 years old and hopefully I'm still walking the earth, but I will be deadlifting when I'm 70 and it's just picking stuff up. Like I just want yes. to still be picking stuff up. Yeah. And squatting and, I, and squatting down and standing up without yeah. effort. So, <laughs> and it's, it's such a great movement for everything, yes. for biceps, for shoulders, for hat, for, for hips, for knees, for ankle mobility, all that stuff. So anyway, I, I'm a big fan of the deadlift, but not the single rep stuff. Like I, that's yeah. if you're competing, I, great. Yeah, but not I personally for like to do like a body weight or a 225 is a yep. pretty that's, good one, and just you know rep out. You know reps of 10. You know, agreed. You know, totally you know, agree. Yeah, 10, 15. It's such maybe. a, it's such a great the deadlift and the pull up complement each oh. other so very well. Yeah, we we yeah. do those back to back sometimes, and then Same. you just All like the time. You can't even hang on the bar; your grip's gone. <laughs> so good, yep. yep. Especially you're gonna find the pull up bars, ladies and gentlemen. The pull up bars and buds are fat. Oh man, yeah, they're not little. Bars. You're not gonna. They're big. They're they're big bars. So be be aware of that. Yeah, you you'll constantly be stretching out your forearms you know, yep. whenever you're doing pull ups and. I remember falling off the bar. I just couldn't hang on to it. You know, yep. one day I was wet and sandy and. They will. They'll be wet and sandy and the tape will be all yeah. slippery and slimy from the morning PTs because they do. Yeah. Yep. All right. So agility, you know, this pro agility, I like this one. This one's a fun one. It only takes four to five seconds if you're, you know, really fast four. But uh, you know, this is kind of a, I always equated this one to same. Usually if you're, you know, 40 speed is pretty similar to your uh, 510 five agility. Yep. You know, that marker, yeah. that marker right there from a standpoint of, of testing, aside from testing someone's ankle flexion, the 5105, the NFL and other organizations use that specifically to predetermine to see if an individual is uh, at risk of injury. Yeah. That's because it, it tests dynamic deceleration, dynamic slowing of down. That's power. That is power. And that's amortization. That's, can this person stop his body? Can this person have body armor on and yeah. jump, you know, step off of a helo and get hurt? Can right. he get over a six foot fence with body armor on? And then when he hits the ground, can he handle that load? That's what it's testing. So the durability, that's a test of durability for buds. It's yeah. a good one. So yeah. be an athlete, like go yeah. play soccer. Yeah. Soccer players do, you know, kind of thing. Just, play basketball with your kids or run around, like be, be a kid still run around, jump on a, jump on a trampoline, jump rope. Yep. All right? of those. Jump, jump rope and like have a, have a straddle basically, or just have a piece of tape and that jump rope, jump forward and back, forward and back and then turn and then jump sideways. Boom. Your agility, your five ten five is going to get better. Yep. Good one. Good. Simple one. stuff. 300 yard shuttle one. We've kind of beaten that one up, you know, 30, you know, 60 seconds or less. That, that, that's a good standard. You know, Repeat it. Be able to. So the oh, only thing yeah. I'll say, do, do, it, so do a 300. Do your, see how long it takes you. It takes you 55, 60 seconds. Rest 55 or 60 seconds, whatever it is. Do it again. Yeah. Rest. Do it again. When you can't do, repeat, rest. Yeah. Take, take, shut it down. You're going to find that more you can repeat that. The most I've ever seen anyone really repeat it at max effort is somewhere around six. Woo. It's, it's, it's great. That's, so typically three yeah. good is three. If you can do it three times, max effort, it's pretty good. Yeah. Six is silly. Yeah. Yeah. Two is normal. Two is, but, you should be able to do it or repeat yeah. it out of two. And yeah. that, then, then you just drop the, the distance. You go 300, 300, you know, you're doing it for 56, 60 seconds of rest and then do a 200. Keep the 60 seconds of rest. Do 200. And then you just feather, you just stay ahead of that fatigue curve and keep the velocity up. All right. So I, I think we beat the three mile run. Let me see. We also have the push up, sit up, four mile run. So three mile run, that, that's, you know, 18 to 19 minutes. That's a classic fast score. You know, that's a, it's a good goal to shoot for. I mean, I think that's pretty fast. Yep, I mean, you're, you're going to have guys that make it through hell week that are in the twenties, 
Yep. Run this one, you know, probably 21 even. Um, that's fine. Uh, but if you can run, if you can run a seven minute pace. Yeah. You're always, in. Always you're in. You're in. You're in. Yeah. Master a seven minute pace. Don't exactly. get stuck on the six minute pace. Because let me tell you, there are rarely any guy, you know, six, seven weeks into buds. There aren't many guys running 24, 25 nope. minute four mile timed runs yeah they're not coming out of the gate fast like like horses on a racetrack yeah. it's here's my pace here's what i can maintain okay i've got the finish line in in sight i'm going to shift up a little bit and finish strong that's that's what people typically do right um swims you know these are are good good swims you know for yep. this for this distance um you know, yeah, one of the faster? things too. Yeah, you could be, but I mean, with the big fins that you have on, you're likely not going to be faster. If you guys don't have fins, go on Amazon or go to your local sporting goods store and get some soft fins. And the reason why is this: two reasons. One, it conditions you for fin swimming. Yeah. And and the other piece is because it gives you a tremendous amount of good ankle flexion. A plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, so poised, toes pointed down and up, but it also really strengthens that tibialis anterior, that front side of that muscle on your shin, specifically for that shin splint health. Okay, yeah. really, that's the fins are great. Use them, get used to them. Okay, don't overuse them, yeah. but get used to using them. Yeah, yeah, they're good ones. All right, so final thing pull up, push up, sit ups. These are all in the range that that we always recommend, you know, yep. 80 to a hundred pushups and sit-ups. I, I recommend, you know, 20 on the pull-ups. That's, yep. that's, not, that's the standard. Yeah. Not impossible to get. I mean, yeah, I know I, the minimum standard is way on down there, like maybe 65, 65 and 12 or eight yeah. or something. But you know, that th those scores do you no good. You know, it, Agreed. these, these will give you, the muscle endurance that you need for the daily PT that you're going to do. And yes, you will do daily push-ups at buds, probably a you know, couple, hundred, couple hundred reps. Yeah. You know, before Under you the worst conditions, <clears throat> right? The most stressful, chaotic conditions. Yeah. That you're going to be doing a lot of push-ups, but you don't need to train for daily push-ups by doing daily push-ups. Agreed. Yeah. You know, Cause you're Agreed. just going to break yourself down. Cause no one at the end of buds is wanting to go do push-ups when, when they finish buds, you know, they, sure. yeah. they need a break from doing push-ups. Yeah. They might still be good at push-ups, but you know, it is one of those things that um, they're definitely not better at push-ups just because they've been doing push-ups every day for six months. Keep this in mind. I know Stu and I've said many times, Hey, get over a hundred push-ups, do 130, whatever it is under the conditions that Stu and I train individuals where we're not buds instructors anymore or, or whatever. Yeah. I'm not, we're not yelling at our athletes. So they are going to perform at the 120, 130, whatever. But now when you show up to buds and you have all these new stress and just, if you get 130, great. But if you're doing 130 pushups, for example, in this non-permissive training environment that Stu and I are conducting, the likelihood of you getting 100 is really likely. You see that? So we're really trying to prepare you for stressors that we can't see True. if you can do 130 right with us you're going to be able to do 100 of buds yes okay you may not get 130 but you'll get 100 yeah correct um i have a few more things on here just that because I, I like to finalize this whole conversation jeff with <clears throat> you know you can see some of the best and the worst scores in this section you know you can see the worst scores that dropped and the best scores that dropped the worst scores that made it and the best scores that made it and you'll see there's there's really no correlation, you know, to who makes it through hell week. You know, there is that right. mystery. There is that mystery intangible of, you know, mental toughness and heart and desire that we just can't measure. Agree. You know, because you can see here, like in a four mile timed run, 21, 48, that's ridiculous. The slowest is 30. You know, that's, that's pretty slow. You know, it's not, not super slow. I mean, it's a sub eight pace, but, but it's a big difference between 21 48. That's huge. I mean, that's another yeah. mile for that guy. Yeah. The, the fastest guy can run five miles in 30. Yep. You know, so, all right. So let's look at the, the scores that didn't make it once again, same damn scores. 
You know, so if, if I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> the guy that didn't make it has a worse time than the best that did. Yeah. So anyway, there's just, you know, the, the, this was a funny one when I saw it, you know, that the best and the worst times were the same ones that made it and didn't make it. Yes. You know, so there is obviously um, running is important, but, you know, not quitting is. is Trump's that all the time trumps it absolutely now if you're not performing like you, you could be the best guy in the world yes. but if you're running a 35 minute mile or four minute four mile they don't it's you're not gonna perf, they're gonna performance trap you yeah. so don't don't mistake us on that either yes oh yeah i'm not saying you still gonna hit the standards yeah you you gotta be like i said jeff and i said what is good seven minute mile if you can seven do a seven minutes, minute mile you will pass every day, run you'll pass everything yeah. but that that can't be your capstone yeah. Right. Train harder than that. Yeah, train harder than seven minute mile. Be able to downshift it and run a seven minute mile any day of the week. For those of you that get to and through hell week, this will make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can take a look at the, the swim with fins here. Once again, kind of all over the place. The real slow one was pretty darn slow. Yeah. He didn't make it, but this is pretty slow and he made it. Yeah. He, but it's still, you know, minute, look, at, look at the best score who fast. dropped from training. Yeah. Smoking fast. Yeah. That's real fast. That, that would probably be one of those world-class swimmers Couldn't, that can't uh, run very well. That uh, didn't run, you know, had, had shin splints. You know, yeah. Had, maybe this, maybe this goes without saying, but I want to say it. I would be willing to bet without a doubt, like this person that says drop from training at 1050 he didn't get dropped for swimming, folks. No. <laughs> His no. performance drop or quitting came somewhere else, just, just so we're clear. Yes, that's a, that's a very good distinction. Uh, push-ups, once again, kind of all over the place. You know, 70 and 70 is the minimum that make it and the minimum that fail. But, you know, look at that 140 in there. Yeah. You know, he probably could have focused on some other things besides getting 140 push-ups in two minutes. Probably, or yeah. he was just built for push-ups. You know, I'm built for push-ups. I have a big Same, chest yeah. and short arms, and I was a wrestler. You know, yeah. push-ups came easy. You know, for if sure. you're six foot four and got long arms, you know, push-ups are probably going to be a little harder. Yeah. So. And that's the thing is not all – yeah, not all push-ups are created equal. Yes. Like, they're just – and it's – but what you're trying to do is maximize each individual's yep. capability. And the cool thing about this section is they do give you a smart training goal, you know, 80 to 89 reps. You know, Jeff and I like to say 80 to 100 just because it's, it's a pretty – We rough. want a buffer. We, we don't yeah. – like if they're saying 80 is their capstone, we want to create a capstone that gives us some room for error because of fatigue or stress. Or you're sick. Or you – exactly. Day. You're you sick. You a bad day at Bud's and, you know, you, you have to – downshifted a notch and you're still going to be in the passing zone because understand if, if, if i'm not mistaken like let's say you show up to buds and you're pre-hell week and you god forbid you get the flu it takes you out a day of training if you, i think if you get taken out a second day of training you get rolled or dropped yeah if you miss two days you're you're, you're done. done you got especially post pre-hell week yeah you gotta hope you get sick on a friday yeah. And the rest. So it's not that they're going to like boot you out potentially, but understand that like that's a lot of fatigue in my mind, or I'm sorry, a lot of illness in buds happens. It's directly correlated to stress. Yeah. Not so much like the push ups. I'm talking just this new environment that Stu has mentioned a bunch of times. We want to create a lot of stress for you guys before you go in so you can acclimate better and. You, you know, you don't have a massive loss of appetite and indigestion issues and heartburn and diarrhea and all these things that will contribute to a lot of fatigue. Yeah. You take a look at stress symptoms or overstress symptoms. Yeah. We could do a video on that yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, Hey guys, like, cause once, once you, you know, like kids that are afraid of the dark, at some point we stop being afraid of the dark because it's, we realize that that's a self manifested fear. Same with buds. Now, they're going to put a lot of stress on you. They're not going to put hands on you. But the environment is so stressful. But also, our, most people's drive to succeed is so high. So there's a lot of self-induced stress. Yes. 
A yeah. lot. And, you know, a lot of guys that go to these training programs have never failed before in their life. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's very little. Or if, if there's a failure, it's, you know, they lost a wrestling match or something like that. But they've, they've always won in the long run at something. And to, yeah. to lose is, can be devastating. You know? What I have found, and I think probably Stu would concur, is that in the SEAL teams, the guys, for, the, for all of us, it's not unlike sport. Like you go to the NFL, every one of those players, even the guys that were like, yeah, you're a bozo and you suck. He was the best football player at every level he's ever played at. He's in the NFL. His hometown, he was probably the best athlete in everything that he ever did. And same with us as as SEALs is like, that's why I love the SEAL community so much is because all the people that I was with, they were really, really, really good at something. Yes. And it was so, it's so awesome to be around that group. When you show up to Bud's, Pretty much everybody there was really good at something, something. And exceptional. Exceptional. Like, exceptional. And, and like can walk past a piano and play Mozart. It's you know, I mean, just the silliness that you're, you're going to find talent. people that like, you're going to be like, you, um, I, I know a guy that just went to Bud's and he got through it. <laughs> it's crazy enough. He, uh, he was a nuclear engineer. Here at, here at the naval base, he was the guy that repaired the nuclear reactors on the carriers. Damn. He enlisted in the Navy. He's a nuclear engineer, and he's an E3 in the Navy. Just finished Buzz. He's an E4 now. That's great. Nuclear engineer. <laughs> he, went, he went to Emory University. Oh, yeah. And he's like, he's an, I'm like so you just never know who you're going to have in your Buzz class. Yeah, you get some smart guys in there, that's for sure. Yep. Um, sit-ups, or what is this, pull-ups? Body weight, max, pull-ups. Yes, yeah, so just yeah. your body weight pull-ups. You can see the guy did 36 pull-ups. Probably spent too much time doing pull-ups. Yeah, but unless you're a weirdo like me, I did 36 pull-ups. We had a guy that did 96. Yeah, you know, we had or a 92. Gymnast. We had a gymnast that was way yeah. there too. That he was, a, uh, he, was, he was an officer. Never dropped. And he just crushed. He still to this day is a freak. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are actually, there are freaks. Yeah. But like I said, you know, there was this guy who made it through hell week, could only do 10 pull-ups. Yeah. So it's, is it a predictor? No. Yep. But, you know, you, you got to have a base. And that, that's, that's a minimum standard base right there. For sure. Um, we we kind of talked about the 300 yard a little bit, but you can see these best and worst times, you know, 67 and 73. I mean, 50-year-old men can do better than that. You know, so for sure. Uh, deadlift max. We talked a little bit about that. One point five to two, two point three. You know, those those are solid. But you can see there's no difference on people who made it and the people who didn't make it. They were still the best and yeah. worst times. You know, and, and take sure. take a look at this uh, study. Like I said, it's it's really good. It's got some good data in here for you, and you can. We we just wanted to try to break it down for you. So yeah. Um, you know, you want one of the beautiful things about this is that Naval Social Warfare did a really, I, I think they did a, an exceptional job uh, of choosing the exercises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. That's, that's half the battle. It, it, just know that the, this wasn't a shotgun approach, ladies and gentlemen. This was something that was really thought about, was well thought through, was well executed. And it's just, we want to, and, and I know that without a doubt, the information that we're sharing is what, well, you'll find about the military, especially naval social warfare, is they, they want to be concise because time is of, of, of great value with these guys. So yeah. we're going very long-winded, yeah. and without a doubt, I know they felt the same way. Yeah. We're just expounding upon what they, they – they, I'm sure they intended. Yeah. You could have written a book on this, you know, analysis and gone on, like I said, for a lot more than two paragraphs – you know, at the beginning to fully explain it. For sure. Um, they did a great job. It's a fantastic, you know, 18 class, 19 class study of, of uh, bud students. And uh, yeah, just keep in mind how long that, so it, if it, they did 18 classes at four a year, that's like, yes, it, yeah. this, four they five. invested some serious data collection in this. Yeah. And it's, it's exceptional. We just, wanted to expound upon it. Yeah. So once again, you know, our thing is, you know, it really depends on how you need to prepare yourself for, for buds, you know, with our answer, it depends, you know, check out our, our podcast that we did recently. 
um, on it depends because, you know, it really depends on your weakness. You know, where are you weak? You know, and if you're constantly working on things that you're good at, you know, you could be, you know, creating that imbalance that this analysis talks about of not being able to do other things. Yeah. So I think that's probably, in my opinion, the most conclusive piece of the most conclusive conclusion um, from all of this. These people were, these are these, these folks didn't complete training because of their deficiencies, not because of their strengths. Yeah. Because that's even the saying, Hey, this person scored 36 pull-ups, but he still dropped from training. He, he didn't get dropped from training, obviously because of his upper body strength. He got dropped from training probably because of some, he was too finitely focused on his strengths. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's the, the best conclusion we can have on this one is, you know, do it all, do it all well, be good at everything. And if you're great at something, that's great. You know, enjoy be, that. Be good at something else too then and work. Yeah. It, that's work why I think if, if you're really good at something, that will allow you the opportunity to focus on something else without uh, losing the qual. Like if you're a really great swimmer, if you become a great runner, it's only going to help your swimming. Yeah. If you're a really good swimmer and you improve your upper body strength or power, it's going to make you a better puller in the water. Yeah. Okay. 18% of your power and turn your power and not power endurance, your strength endurance in an endurance running phase, 18% comes from these guys, your arms. So better arm, better push ups, better back strength will give you a lot better endurance when you run. So they're all complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. This was a good one. This was, this was probably one of our longer ones that we've done. We apologize for being long winded there, but um, you know, this, this is one of those things that I, I think need a little further explanation. Um, it's great stuff. We're not, once again, we are not bashing spec war in the community. This is just an, just another objective opinion of, uh, of the details that they provided. And, uh, you know, just another, you know, set of pair of voices that, uh, you know, are here to, to try to help you. So agreed. All right. Well, that's it. This was a awesome. tough one. Yep. <laughs> not, not as tough let, as, let the questions not, ensue. Yeah, not as tough as mental toughness, though. <laughs> no. But I'm seeing the people yeah. were digging that. They they yep. appreciated that one. So that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. We're stepping. Right. We yeah. yeah. Keep firing the questions at us, and we will continue to put out uh, some quality content. Yeah, I think maybe the next one would be a good one on stress, the physiology of stress. Yep. What what's happening to your body, and and it can become psychological too. But uh, for sure, you know, we definitely can nick it in the bud if we can um you know deal with it physically first yeah all right so that's what we'll do so uh jeff thanks again this is awesome pleasure you're brilliant i'll see you later all right take care <laughs>